Yeah, toxic windstorm. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I'm at the salt sea. This place is pretty crazy. You know, the history I heard on it, this is California's worst environmental disaster. Supposedly in 1900, they were cutting channels from the Colorado River to irrigate farmland or do something. And one of the embankments overflowed and went to this basin. So it made a, a sea about 60 miles wide, 50 miles long. And currently we're sitting about 250 feet below sea level. So it filled up, and then after World War II, it kind of became a resort town around it. Like it was like one of the places to be fancy houses, docks, boats. But in the 70s, scientists were warning that something bad was going to happen because of so much runoff from the farms and it made this uh, sea extremely saline and filled it with nitrates and all sorts of other chemicals well of course nobody listens to scientists today or even back then <laughs> so eventually I think it was like in the 80s or 90s there was a mass die off of fish there was like botulism birds that ate the fish died like 14 Elegance. and uh, it's been pretty lifeless here since and they kind of shut off the water here and there so it's uh, shrinking too so all those people who build houses next to the sea with docks you'll see it in my flying video but uh, <laughs> that sea's nowhere near them now I bet those people are pissed off it's crazy it's neat to fly here but it's also kind of sad it's like I've never seen pollution on this scale. The apples here has a lot of destruction. It looks like a beach of sand, but it's not. It's like dusty mud. It's uh, if it gets wet, it turns into mud, but it's just straight up dust. But you can walk and run in it really well. So this is actually a great takeoff landing area. But if you look, you'll see on the ground, like a bunch of white things. They're fish bones. This thing's just littered with broken up fish bones. And here on the shoreline, I mean, there's just a kind of Like, it's really freaky. This thing's totally like. And so they put up a, they put up a bunch of hay bales to control the dust situation to try to get some vegetation going. But as I read the history, California keeps trying to propose laws to clean this area up, and then the money never gets itself near here uh, it looks like a second world country like so many abandoned lots and things just fall apart it's this is not an area you would live very long if you lived here permanently that's for sure but if you want to come visit this is a, an awesome area I mean you just get all that space to take off and run in and even with a lot of people, it makes it so much easier. I'm parked up right against the landing area. I just walk out, launch, and it's just great. It's a, it's a fun place to fly in. It's just kind of sad to see something so polluted in second world, too. And it makes me feel weird, too, because not a lot of people can afford to do what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. I, I only flew once in my last uh, flying endless foot drag, and here, I've, I've been flying like four days in a row, so it's been pretty cool. Yeah, just like, look at all that dust in the background that I kicked up. Like, I could taste the dust and it was hard to get out of my mouth. Every time I walked back in from outside today, I'd have to rinse my mouth off with a mouthwash like I was sucking some beep, bad beep. And that guy is gonna go canoeing across the Salton Sea. This is crazy. Hey, all right. All right, what we got going on here? Ooh, oh hot mama. Oh my God. He's gonna wreck my sh He got me! He got me! <laughs>
All right, first flight. Let's see what she's got. Okay, gate's closed. All right, my first flight, I almost wrecked myself. So, problem was I was tired and exhausted. I showed up to Salton Sea and I was so excited to be there. I spent a day resting and not flying right away, but I didn't eat for like 36 hours. And my friends were like, dude, Steve, you didn't eat. I was just too excited. It had been a month since my last flight. And so I attempted my first flight exhausted. And also my lean back form went to crap. Obviously I wasn't taken off very quick and I ended up sitting. Oddly enough, not a single nick on my prop. I was pretty impressed. What I'm going to do after this is cut over to my friend's POV because first couple of flights, we ended up having comms on and having comms and flying with your buddies is a lot of fun. Never done that before. But when we had comms on, my helmet didn't record audio very well. So I figured I'd go over to my buddy's POV, hang out in the skies that way. He caught me sitting in my seat from the air. So you'll see that too. Yeah, I picked a bad week to stop sniffing glue. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, he's just waiting. Lady. Looks good. He's turned around. Looks good. Good. Taxi. Taxi. Pull some brakes, Steve. He's off the ground. Oh, he's he tried to quit, but it's fine. He's lying, boss. Check the prop, cause I I didn't just like slide in there. I like I hit a bump. So my second takeoff, I redeemed myself. Did my first reverse launch since last April, which I kite all the time, so not really a big deal. Came down, stuck the landing. For the rest of the trip, my takeoffs were pretty decent. Landings, I was a bit on a struggle bus, but towards the end, I was getting it dialed back in, but I'm gonna save that for another video about struggling with takeoff form and landings and what I learned from it and how I was trying to correct things. Here you go, let's check it out.
Because <laughs> that's how I roll. I have bad aim. Just look at my bathroom. Wow, that was a wild landing. Why did I land all the way out here? <laughs> Justin Graham! Oh wow! Check that out! Holy sh! This is f cool! Yeah! That was deliberate!
All right, let's see what she's got. In the middle of a desert, surrounded by canyons, I gotta do a nil one launch. Legs, chest, gates. So Kyla O sent us a pin to meet us up in the canyons and I had never taken off from an instructor's field or a flying field before. So this was my first remote takeoff. So I scoured the area pretty good to get a game plan of how I wanted to take off out of here. I know some power lines. I knew I needed a long runway for myself. The wind was pretty nil. It was a little bit twitchy, but going along that road in front of me. So I kind of figured if I can keep the wings straight along that road, I'd be pretty good. But when I went to inflate, went off to the side a little bit. So I ended up going into the bushes. And when I knew that was going on, I was like, okay, I'm going to taxi until I find a clear path, which I did. But then I found a giant mound in front of me as I was adding throttle. So I had to throttle back down, hop over it as I was going down the mound. Of course, I lose my form and I'm getting drilled into the ground because of my posture. But luckily, I got up pretty well and had one of the most breathtaking flights I've ever had. <laughs> So I knew the canyons were a place where I could really wreck myself and a motor out, but I wasn't careful. So I gained plenty of altitude, decided to enjoy the scenery a bit, went and checked out the mountains, but started getting kind of turbulent. So from that point, I started looking around to see what other people were doing. And sure enough, I found a actual like washout in the canyons where I was like, you know, I could run down that thing and if I had a motor out, I'd be fine. It was awesome. It just turned into like one of my most breathtaking flights like ever. I absolutely loved it. It was amazing. Yeah, canyon run. Oh, sh this is cool. Yeah. Quit letting off smoke. I will say landing at the edge of a canyon makes you feel like James Bond. Yeah. Check it out. Right, enough of this. We got other places to be. Let's make like a tree and get the out of here.